okay so in this fading discussion as we mentioned we have two different parts okay i mean when they are counterparts we are still with the first part uh We are explaining here uh, the bad condition. Okay, and this one shows the good environment. The multipath environment is favorable, uh, and, and we get the. Uh, I mean, at the receiving end, okay. I mean, the signal goes through the multipath channel, okay, representing the whole multipath environment where different signal components. Mm -hmm created okay uh, from the same from the same transmission and they arrive at the receiver but the summation of of all these components or versions uh, might cause some distortion but that distortion is uh, not significant in this current slide okay the i mean yt is very close to xt so we don't have, uh, uh, I mean, uh, some we don't have, uh, we don't have a poor reception here. And uh, but in this case, we can see that uh, I mean the bottom figure explains the reason uh, clearly because the operation here is a multiplication. Convolution is difficult to follow, but multiplication you can easily. So if you just multiply every frequency component by, I mean, every X F component, X value for a particular F by H value for a particular F and multiply, and then you get Y value for, for that particular F. So this way, if you multiply, then, I mean, uh, evidently, it will be squeezed because you have the flat part very short okay. over the flat part the input can create its own replica but when you reproduce the rest part of the input bandwidth okay you get actually a different uh, gain for it so that causes actually the output to to also be different, different from your exit. So the whole pattern is changed. And when the I mean, frequency uh, response is twisted, of course, you would get some twisting in the time domain. Uh, but that uh, we can just demonstrate this way that you have, uh, and it is also clear that, I mean, you, you, have you need to compare two different things the bandwidth of your input and the width of your multipath response okay, x if x is narrow and h has a wide flat part okay it is wide or it, it has a wide flat part then it is favorable condition you don't get twisting on the other hand, so it's a relative uh, status, status between X and H. Okay. If, I mean, your H may be narrow or small, uh, I mean, small flat part, but your X if is too narrow, then it is fine. But in this example, our X if is wide or your input signal bandwidth is, is wide, okay? You know that after modulation, you get a particular width of your signal. Like when you modulate a single sinusoid signal, you get certain, I mean, two side band or one side band. So that gives you some bandwidth. So when you have another sinusoid component for that frequency, okay, for frequency of that sinusoid, you'll get another side band. So this way you define the bandwidth of your output in an actual composite video signal. Okay, or some audio signal. You have so many frequency components in the input. So that causes a whole large bandwidth from all these side bands, okay, after modulation. 
so you you get a whole band uh, I mean, range of frequency components to cover all of them you need a lot bandwidth so that defines the bandwidth of your input so if that bandwidth is wide and the flat part is short then you have this problem you have some testing in the time domain it could be uh, equivalently uh, shown this way that i mean you get wider bandwidth in the frequency response when you have narrow uh, shape in the time domain so when your uh, symbol period is small you actually have narrow shapes okay uh, so it's small ts value ts is the symbol period so zero to ts is the length of your symbol you're sending one symbol here so when your ts is small or your symbol period is small you actually get wider bandwidth uh, also the multipath response is, is not good you have wide range here in the time domain in the frequency response you'd get something narrow so that's causing that problem so when you use convolution uh, I mean, if we if we did real communication between these two shapes you would get something like this okay, which is quite a bit different from your input form so you have got twisting now this favorable condition is called flat fading why is it called so because it has been you have got this good result because you had some good flat part in the frequent multipath frequency response on the other hand, in this case, different frequency components were got, uh, have undergone different uh, gains okay, in, the, in this frequency operation. So they are faded differently. So different frequency components are faded differently through the multipath channel, causing the distortion. We can call it frequency selective fading. Different, I mean, it fades uh, different, different frequency components differently. Okay, so frequency selective. Select if you select different frequency, you find different fading. So you have some frequency selective. You don't have a common fading for all of them. Well, I mean, if all the frequency components are equally affected, you I mean, the amplitude levels may, go, may get lower. That's not a problem. Using amplifier, you can amplify. Okay, I mean, you can increase the strength. But if different frequency components are affected differently, then you get distortion. The frequency response doesn't look the same. So amplification doesn't help there. Okay, I mean, you... You, you'd get re re twisting anyway, the shape would change. The actual bit patterns would change. If you want this, they change. Okay. So, I mean, it's not the, it's not what power level you are getting there. Power level can also be a problem because uh, that we'll explain later. But here it's more like what, I mean, whether or not all, I mean, the whole part of the input is equally affected or not. Okay, if the whole range of output should be equally affected, then it doesn't cause twisting. So we have frequency selective fading here. So that's a problem. So the good uh, multipath environment, okay, is called, uh, I mean, it's known to be something causing flat fading. And the bad one is known to be something called frequency selective fading. Okay. Well, <clears throat> but we need to est <clears throat> estimate clearly. Uh, well, as an RF engineer, you should try to work with some number. <clears throat> so, I mean, if everything is vague, all the things are actually analog in the, in the real world, okay. But you wanna have, you wanna work with some discrete numbers, okay, as, as an engineer in the practical field. So one way to do that, uh, is to define something called coherence bandwidth. What is that? It's an estimate 
uh, of the flat range of the frequency response. Okay, I mean, e, well, the in the real uh, case, the I mean, HF is never uh, this kind of regular. Okay, I mean, you have straight lines. Okay, so this is a you know, I mean, just an ideal presentation. In the in reality, you have all fluctuations, all fluctuations. Okay, but you can still consider some some range. I mean, some fluctuation, but it's not falling too much. Okay. It is it is uh, fluctuate, fluctuating within some some small ranges or I mean some ripple like variation. Okay. So you have some sort of sort of flat part. Okay. Is not falling, it's not getting too much away from this particular level or some particular range of values. So then you can just consider it to be flat. Now you can actually try to estimate why, how wide that flat part is. And that is called coherence bandwidth of your multipath environment or multipath channel, coherence bandwidth. Okay. Well, uh, uh, denoted as BC, but you know what? It is definitely related to the delay spread of your multipath environment. If you do a testing in your multipath environment like this and find out the PDT, just send an impulse from the transmitter, take the different impulses received at the receiver. People do uh, um, this kind of testing. Uh, using a signal what is called signal analyzer at the receiving end. Okay. So that can give you uh, PDP and from there you can calculate the delay spread. Now definitely, I mean, they are related to each other. If you have longer delays, longer delays, uh, especially with significant power components, then definitely you have the environment more problematic okay it's a poor condition and in that case you would have in time domain h to be wide h to be wide you have actually delayed components h would, would, would have a wide range in time domain in frequency it is short so the delay i mean long delay spread is indicative of problematic uh, uh, multipath environment. Okay. So if you want to estimate in frequency domain, you may want to estimate the level of problem in the environment using coherence bandwidth. If your coherence bandwidth is, I mean, large, then it is favorable. The larger it is, the better it is. The smaller it is, the worse it is. But as you have a uh, smaller coherence bandwidth, your delay speed must be higher. Okay. If you work in time domain, then you'd get it. It's up to you whether you work in time domain or frequency domain. <clears throat> if you work in time domain, you <clears throat> you will find large delay speed. If you work in, in the same environment, if you work in frequency domain, you will get short edges. Okay. So, uh, and vice versa for this type of environment. Now, uh, there are different uh, relationships, okay, between uh, this lambda. So you, you can use, I mean, this formula in the exam. So like uh, BC and uh, uh, delay speed, you see, I mean, 50 multiplied by delay speed, uh, if you if you take its reciprocal, it is an estimation of BC. So the way they they may relate. So the formula based on a lot of tests and, and some theoretical uh, understanding, basic formula. However, it's actually I mean there is a hard and fast relationship here because in in real life, as I say, that you have a lot of fluctuation. Okay, here. We have a lot of fluctuations in the frequency domain. So, I mean, it's it's falling. Okay, it may not be falling too much. So it is up to you 
how much how uh, i mean uh, i mean how much you relax as you look at it okay when you estimate the flat range if you uh, are too tight in consideration that i mean you set a line for your flat range part you set a line and it has to be very close to that if it falls uh, too much from this level then you consider that oh, oh it is it is it has been away from the flat level okay. so the flat part when you consider the range of the flat part if you are too tight in in consideration that it you have to it has to be close to this particular you said a level okay. it has to be very close to that so how you do that you can use some correlation correlation so if it is within 90 percent of that value then you consider that you are still with this acceptable range with this 90 percent uh, deviation how you check how wide you have the flat range but if you further relax that well even if you fall quite a bit below that level okay even when you are up to even when it is 50 percent away from that level you still consider okay okay it's okay you're still in the 50 flat uh, i mean that level okay then you would find a wider flat range it hasn't yet uh gone beyond that range you're you're considering a wider uh, and so you you correlate with a with a level you first set a level and then you correlate all the values around if you okay when you if when even you have 50 percent correlation you're fine okay so if you can relax then of course your uh, flat range will be wider so people use different uh, level of correlation depending on their particular application. Well, if you use say 0.9 correlation, 90% correlation, then you would have a small coherence bandwidth estimation. Your estimated coherence bandwidth will be short. So with your delay spread, it can be related this way. You multiply by 50. However, if you relax, correlation if you allow correlation up to 0.5 then you you will get small coins bandwidth and that is like you have to multiply i mean by five only sorry you have you you, you have the large coins bandwidth sorry you have the large coins bandwidth okay so multiply here delisted by five okay and that will give you large coherence value so it's up to the particular application uh, and uh, i mean the D rf engine has to decide what correlation may be appropriate for the particular application how strict how stringent he, he should be okay now for our exam if i don't specify anything then please use the bottom relationship use the bottom relationship as a formula to solve the problem now the engineers uh, the, i mean try to although it is difficult to come to a black and white conclusion sometimes okay uh, but you can still try to uh, you can still want to just declare a particular environment as flat or frequency selective is good condition favorable or not favorable so in our exam we'll take it this way when you find that your signal bandwidth is smaller than coherence bandwidth okay like i mean coherence bandwidth is, is the flat part if your signal bandwidth is smaller than this this range then you are fine it you get a replica okay but if your signal bandwidth is larger than coherence bandwidth the flat range then you consider it to be frequency selective okay so in the problem if i ask you uh whether i mean the given condition is 
representing a flat fading or frequency selective fading condition. So you may, if you work in frequency domain, then find out the signal bandwidth and coherence bandwidth, and then compare. If the signal bandwidth is smaller, then it is flat, okay, you are in good condition. If it is larger, then declare that it is frequency selective fading. However, if you work in time domain, then you compare the symbol period, TS, with delay spread. Okay, compare TS with, with the delay spread. Uh, please give me a second. I'm sorry for the break. Uh, okay, so uh, if, uh, well, uh, by the way, you guys can hear me, right? Yes, yes. Okay, okay so if, uh, you know, TS also um, gives you an idea of the condition. Uh, so compare with, I mean, here you have an estimation with delay spread. So in that case, if you find that for our exam case, we'll consider uh, this way. If your delay spread is smaller than 0.1 TS, then declare it to be a good condition, flat fading. If the delay spread is larger than 0.1 TS, okay, because in time domain, I mean, it is the relationship is not straightforward. The comparison is not straightforward. It uses convolution. But whether, I mean, using this, one tenth of team symbol period. I mean, it's a. Uh, it uh, seems to be a good uh, boundary. Okay. Between favorable and uh, poor condition. So, if you work in time domain, compare these values. Now, uh, so that's uh, so far. We have been only discussing. Uh, the problem, how we can uh, resolve, how we can try to resolve, what may be the methods. Okay. So in this slide, we'll have a quick discussion. Uh, well, one of the way is to use a, uh, well, first of all, let me tell you, there are many different techniques in wireless communication to try to overcome the uh, bit errors, okay? To fix the errors in the received bits. You're sending this bit stream and you're receiving from the other end. In wireless communications, invariably, some bits will be in error. But you, you try to minimize, you just try to minimize. And there are many different techniques to minimize it, they work together. Uh, so, so all those techniques are helpful, I would say, first of all, that's the first comment. Secondly, one uh, simple method is that you try to reshape in the frequency domain. I mean, it's like a filter. Okay, so the filter uh, you is adjustable, but you, the filter operation is like you reshape the received signal and try to make it like what you, I mean, what the transmitted uh, one is. But you need to know what the transmitted one is, right? If you want to reshape, if you know that already, then, then you, you're done. So you need to know how the reshaping should be done. In fact, the environment keeps changing. You may be a mobile user. I mean, you may be moving. The environment itself is changing. So every time you need an estimation of the, if you even even if you are aware of the uh, environment, okay, and accordingly you want to reshape, the environment is changing. It's ever changing. So, I mean, you need to know uh, how the reshaping should be done. I mean, the, the whole, I mean, the different frequency components you reshape. Okay, reshape and try to match the input. 
what is done i mean let me just give an example we'll later uh, discuss the packetization for gsm you see there uh, the actual information bits uh, take up in a packet 57 bits on one side and 57 bits on the other side okay so 114 bits but you split them into two parts and in between them you send 26 bits so you first in the packet in every packet you have 57 bits then 26 bits and then 57 bits this 57 plus 57 are your information bits so the receiver doesn't know what they may be but the 26 bits in the middle are actually some given sequence it is the it has some fixed bit pattern in every packet what the receiver does it first checks it first i mean try, tries to recover the middle part but if it find it so it knows what they sh should be if it finds it different then it reshapes the filter such that the received bits become uh, equal to what they should be it, it knows what how, how they should be so it reshapes the it, it adjusts or it sets the filter so that the middle bits become uh, what they should be okay they they match the expected bit pattern and the same setting for the filter is applied over the whole packet they apply this particular filter setting or reshaping for the whole packet so we can expect okay that this 57 and 57 on the two side bits will also be corrected okay i mean uh, in the reproduce data they i mean the reshaping will help actually recovering this bit uh, correctly so it is called equalizer uh, so in every burst you have to adjust the equalizer equalizer you have to adjust con constant however in practice these equalizers cannot help you perfectly and uh, also it, is, it has complex operation it's expensive expense is, is not the not a problem okay uh, i mean just expenses always for new circuit okay uh, can be a little significant but gradually the it drops uh, the key problem is the quality of performance okay it doesn't work very well uh, no i mean so another uh another solution is what is done in 4g or 5g uh, cellular communication what they do they use very sh short bandwidth but but how it is done well well uh, let me tell you if uh, i i hope i can finish we have up to 10 30 okay. so i think i can finish well so let me explain this part it will take a few minutes you can split your whole data stream into multiple paths okay. a number of streams data streams you can create from your original data stream if you do that like if you create um, 100 uh, bit streams from your original data, stream, then every newly created path will have lower bit rate, right? Just it will be 100 of your original. So every newly created path will have a smaller bandwidth because we know from Shannon's capacity theorem or its equivalent relationship that the bit rate and the required bandwidth are linearly related okay so the bandwidth requirement will also be 100 okay uh, 
uh, uh, of the original, uh, I mean, bit stream. So if you, I mean, this way, this is the method. Okay, it can you can split it into even higher number. So this way you can actually cut down the bandwidth of your input signal. And if if it is if it gets small, then what will happen? It can fit in your uh, coherence bandwidth. It can be smaller than your coherence bandwidth. It can fit in the flat part of the frequency response. So you cannot work on the environment. The environment is not under your control. But you just reduce the input signal bandwidth by splitting into many different bit streams. Okay. So this is exactly what is done in OFDM technique, which is used in 4G and 5G technologies. Uh, however, um, this particular concept was known uh, actually in the past. Yeah, WebDIM is a new invention, is an invention of this century. But these facts are known actually, I mean, even in the, let's say, in the, uh, in the, at least in the middle part of the last century. Okay, people are aware of this, that we, we, we uh, or I mean, in the, sorry, I'd say, no, uh, sorry, I should put it this way, uh, from the early days of digital communication, okay, or, or from, from the early days of wireless communication. So whenever you have, um, I mean, wireless digital communication or something, I mean, people actually had this concept, but the problem was, People didn't do that before, before this century. It's because when you split into different parts, you have to keep, I mean, some bandwidth, some guard band. If you use two bandwidth, two, uh, you, you put two separate uh, bands working uh, independently, then you need to allow some guard band. This is because there is no ideal filter in in the world. So signal from one part, one bandwidth part will interfere with the other. So that way, I mean, there'll be interference among your own bandwidth parts. You can split into 100 parts, but, but they will be interfering the adjacent bandwidth parts. To get rid of that, you need to allow some guard bands just allow some spacing between. As you do that, actually you lose more. You lose a lot of bandwidth, making the system inefficient. So the advantage you get here uh, will be actually less. I mean, the, the guard bands will overpower your advantages from the, uh, from the uh, flat fading operation overall data will be even lower. Now, OFDM is a technique where you can get rid of this guard band requirement. So what they have come up with, what they have proposed is a technique uh, in a way that you, you can actually, you don't need to allow any guard band. Without any guard band, it, it can work. So that is, that is why OFDM uh, is, uh, uh, I mean, it, uh, could be introduced in this century. Uh, but we will discuss in our cellular communication course how you can, you, uh, you can work with WebDM without any guard band requirement. Okay. But the bottom line is uh, you, uh, you split and uh, you can split even uh, into 1200 parts. I mean, it depends on, I mean, you, uh, I mean, the original LT has 15 kilohertz wide bandwidth parts. Okay, so if you have, it depends uh, on the overall bandwidth, okay, how, how much for 10, uh, for 10 megahertz, they use 1600 
carriers. Okay, so splitting 15 kilohertz part, they use in total 1600 bandwidth parts. Okay, Six, sorry, 600. In 20 megahertz implementation, they use 1200. Okay, anyway, so the uh, key point is you use very small bandwidth and it, in, in the case of LT, it is fixed. In 4G, it is fixed for 15 kilohertz. In 5G, it can be 15, it can be 30, it can be 60, it can be 120, okay? And for some of the, for, for some cases, it can be even 240 kilohertz. Okay? So it, it is variable in 5G, but in 4G, it is fixed at 15 kilohertz. Now the second part, okay, questions. Oh, sleeping, guys? No, sir, we're here, sir. Okay. I thought uh, you didn't have questions because you are sleeping. Okay. But the, the way you responded, okay, I mean, it sounded like you were you were almost falling asleep. Very, no, sir. Actually, not as very weak, weak voice. Okay, okay. I mean, so there can be another reason uh, for not having any questions that my explanation wasn't clear enough. Did you see the screen again? Overcoming no, this. Sir. You don't? Okay, then give me. Oh, sir, it is not visible yet. Okay. Give me a second. I need to stop the slideshow first. Now it should be. You can see now, right? Do you yes, see sir. No. Yes. So now we will discuss the second part. Heading due to frequency dispersion, time selection. Well, in this part, we'll consider the multipath channel to be time varying, and it can be because of two different things. Uh, I thought I wrote down these two these two things, like the inver. You, if you were a mobile is user, I mean, if you are moving on a car, okay, then the multipath environment around you is definitely changing. If you're moving fast, then definitely it is changing fast. You're going through different types of multipath environments around itself, yourself. So it is definitely changing. So multipath channel can be time varying this way. And this is the actually common uh, assumption. Also, um, if you are static somewhere, the multipath environment can still change. And some changes are always there, but these changes are, can be less, of course. Okay? For example, something can move. Uh, there can be, there can be say, well, uh, there can be some, some vehicle which was reflecting. Okay. It was uh, standing still, it was parked somewhere. Now, you, I mean, it just uh, moved from there. So it can change. Different things can change in the, in the environment. Okay, things can move in, in your environment. Also, the airflow can cause some change, like the foliage. Okay, the trees cause scattered uh, signals. So because of airflow, there can be changes. So since the signals come via many different, I mean, unpredictable paths, okay, nobody can, can actually fully estimate the multipath environment. There, um, there are hundreds of thousands of unpredictable ways for the signal to take to the receiver, okay? So nobody can estimate any environment fully, but people can 
have a good estimation. So it, uh, it can be time varying. Now, when it is time varying, consider a user moving. You can have something called Doppler shift. But it is, well, I'm, I'm probably, uh, most of you are aware of it. The, the frequency changes. When you're receiving a frequency uh, from a source, if the relative uh, distance um, uh, changes, I mean, if there's a relative motion between the source and the receiver, then the apparent frequency, okay, the frequency that you feel at the receiving end will change. Uh, it's, and it is called Doppler shift. So your receive, receive frequency components will be changed, can change when you're moving, especially when you're moving fast. And this can cause, again, distortion. Because, I mean, you're sending something from the source and you want to receive the same thing, but if, well, I, I, I'll explain it. Uh, I'll explain it from this slide. But before that, let me have a quick uh, derivation for Doppler shift. At the point T, we have the source and uh, a guy is moving this way. Uh, it covers a distance D. Okay. Uh, so it moves from R1 to R2. And for this movement, it takes time del T. So it, it is moving continuously, but for this part of the movement, it took del T. Now, if I draw lines okay, this way from R1 to connect R1, R2, R1 T and R2 T, uh, and then draw a line normal to this, this arm, okay? Uh, then uh, approximately, we can consider these two arms to be equal. Okay, they're not, and I understand. You're drawing a line normal here, but anyway, you can consider uh, them uh, to be approximately equal. So the, addition, the additional path at the location R1, okay, is del L. I mean, it is the, the path TR1 is larger than TR2 by del L. And then this del L will be D cos theta. That is the angle that it is making when it is at the early position. Angle with the transmitter at its early position. Well, <laughs> but uh, when the velocity of the user is V and it is taking del T to cover D, so del and D is actually V del T. So del L is V del T cos theta. Now this del L it has some excess path length because it's causing an excess path length between these two paths. And so it is causing a different phase at the receiving point. If you are receiving from both R1 and R2, of course, the phase will be different because of this uh, additional path, travel path, del L. And we know how to relate the extra phase with the extra path. Del phi equal to two pi lambda into del L. But for del L, we have the relationship, V del T cos theta. So del phi will be like this. Now, uh, let's see why you have the apparent change in frequency or why you have the Doppler shift. Well, here you have, consider del T or, I mean, all this to be very small. Actually, over this time change, you get some change of phase. It's, I mean, in addition to everything, in addition to what you are sending, you are getting this effect because of because of your change of position because of your motion. So 
the whole phase is changing. The whole phase is changing over time. And that is actually, that's an apparent change in frequency. I think I should draw it. Like, um, you know, I mean, this, uh, this writing pet sucks. I mean, it, it doesn't work all the time. So, so I mean, uh, I, I'll try to orally explain. This, and just check if you can understand. So you, you draw some sinusoid, you draw a sinusoid. And then it has a particular change of phase pattern, definitely. Okay, it has a particular change of phase pattern. It is changing phase. But on top of that, if you uh, have some change of phase additionally that over time you are say over 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 one second to complete one whole 360 degree of phase change that's how it is i mean you have a sinusoid you have a sinusoid but if you have some additional change of phase that i mean at a at a uh, rate okay i mean with time, you have some additional change of phase, then what will happen? Uh, you complete this 360 degree phase change maybe in 0.8 second. So previously, you were completing 360 degree phase change in one second. Now you are completing it because you have some additional change of phase with time because of Doppler shift. Doppler shift is offering some additional change of phase. At a, at a particular rate, okay? So in time domain, you have a rate of change of phase. So you're completing it faster. Okay, change of phase, you have some additional change of phase with time. So in 0.8 second, you're completing the cycle. So how it would look like as you are drawing. So you, you, have, you actually draw your sinusoid uh, more squeezed, right? and representing higher frequency. Can you visualize? If you're not sleeping, probably you can. When you're completing the cycles in 0.8 seconds mm -hmm. instead of one, then, and I mean, you are drawing two figures, sinusoid, two figures, uh, side, side by side. Then of course, the later one mm -hmm. is uh, shown to have higher frequency, <clears throat> right? Do you agree? Oh. Yes, sir. Yes. Can you repeat again, sir? Okay. I mean, if you impose some change of phase with time, then that causes an apparent frequency change. Okay. It, change of phase will cause actually, it relates to change of frequency. How is that? So maybe you, you draw a sinusoid where every cycle completes in one second. Okay. So you, you have drawn it. Then you impose some change of phase on top of it. So additional change of phase with, with time, the fa phase is changing at a faster rate. You change some del phi by del t, you add. Okay, I mean, I mean with time, uh, you, have, I mean, you have a rate of change of phase. You impose it on top of that. So because of Doppler shift, you can see that there is, a change of phase is uh, actually, I mean, you have a change of phase over del t time, you get an additional change of phase, phi. So if you use, if you have some additional change of phase, I mean, phase is changing, phase is changing, phase will be changing at even faster rate. The whole sinusoid will get squeezed. It will get complete in, maybe 0.8 second instead of one second. Can you visualize? So two sinusoids, yes, sir. Two cycle cycles you draw side by side. One completes in one second, the other completes in 0.8 seconds because you have additional change of phase you are imposing. So you have, now if, in terms of frequency, what do you get? It is completing the cycles in shorter period meaning that it actually has higher frequency. In one second, it will get more cycles completed. 
it has high frequency or i mean from the figures you can actually see that you have high frequency you have more crowded cycles right yes sir guys probably it's clear now so actually this probably now it is clear why the doppler shift occurs as you have some motion uh, so since when it is getting closer your frequency will in increase you will get i mean del 5 by del t you are imposing i mean you will get the cycles completed more uh, quickly okay so at a faster rate so your actual if your actual frequency is fc the new frequency will be fc plus fd however if you are getting away from the source then the phase change okay will take longer or you you will have the uh, i mean the the cycles spread okay it you will spread the cycles or actually your frequency will drop so you'll have fc minus safety when you're getting out from each other okay now for uh, i mean del phi by del t i mean for del phi you have this relationship divided by del t so you get this two pi by lambda okay uh, so d by lambda cos theta so now we can relate fd doppler shift to v by lambda uh, however uh, i mean if i mean when it maximizes uh, in terms of angle in terms of relative position we can see that at theta equal to 0 we have the maximum doppler shift which is equal to v by lambda okay cool now how it can affect the quality of reception well consider a receive signal which is definitely i mean in reality a composite signal a video or audio whatever which incorporates many different frequency components right when i mean at the receiving end you don't receive a single component in reality in practice you receive many different frequency components okay in the frequency domain now the multipath environment causes many different components okay so you may have some component here and a component here 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 so as you are moving the different multipath components will offer change of phase differently because you see it all depends on how close you are the angle right like the angle affects so the angle for different multipath components i mean there can be some reflector some diffracting edge so they will create different angles with your source so i mean the different multipath components have different angles different uh, path lengths and all that so the doppler shifts will be different for just consider a single impulse for that the doppler shift will be different for different multipath components and <clears throat> sometimes they will be higher they will be additive sometimes you need to subtract it sometimes for, for i mean some source okay i mean maybe you are getting closer to some uh i mean uh i mean the reflect close you are getting close to the reflector from another reflector you are getting away different reflectors are taking signal to you okay as multipath components so as you are moving you may be getting closer to a, a reflector but you you are getting away from another reflector so the different multipath components are affected also with different signs some may increase some may drop they will affect with different values because d lambda they are different so the receive signal will have many different frequency components around you maybe you are sending just one sinusoid one sinusoid then at the receiving end you have one frequency component but because of the multi because of time varying multipath environment time varying multipath channel you will get many different multipath 
many different components now around around that that expected reception one frequency component if you send one sinusoid just a sinusoid signal in the frequency domain you have one component but at the receiving end you would get a i mean many because of doppler is it clear so far okay now in the composite signal you have many components so they all will be shifted in both direction some frequency components higher some frequency so there will be a whole jam jumbling so many frequency components they all are shifted in different i mean with both addition and subtraction that may meaning that on both sides okay they will take different positions so you get actually a new frequency response so that is a whole distortion okay and this problem you can call frequency dispersion because you see that when you consider just one frequency component of the time varying multipath channel is causing many components around so you are dispersing in frequency the multi time varying multipath channel is dispersing each of the frequency components so this is called this problem is called frequency dispersion and the uh, uh so now so far it's the problem so now we, we estimate the level of problem like before well the we know that uh, it is related to the doppler shift okay so you can change you can check how much i mean as it, as the as all the components are moving the total bandwidth will increase i mean the original bandwidth may be say 5 megahertz so containing many different frequency components but if you, as you have all the components taking new frequency positions okay on both sides there will be new frequency components so it may be ranging from say uh, from from some value say uh, 1000 to 1005 megahertz but the new frequency components may be taking 999 uh, 997 okay there may be one component there and the component 998 and also it doesn't stop at 1005 now you may have some components at 1006 okay these are some impractical values though 1006 okay so there will be on both sides of the bandwidth there will be new components causing the whole range to be increased now check how much the increase is this is called doppler spread because of doppler shift because of new frequency components uh from doppler shift you get some some new components as if you have spread okay the in the frequency domain so this is this is spread is because of doppler shift so it is called doppler spread denoted as bd so check how much it is however on any side it cannot be higher than the maximum doppler shift right it cannot exceed the maximum doppler shift on any side so the do i mean the doppler shift will be equal to twice of maximum doppler shift now in our exam unless otherwise specified please calculate the maximum doppler shift using v by lambda if you have v if you have frequency then you can calculate lambda and v v by lambda can give you maximum doppler shift which is shown as fm here in this in this slide okay so fm and fd max means the same in my presentation so you calculate bd this way in the exam it is you calculate it also actually commonly it is calculated this way twice of fm okay so you understand that if you have higher velocity then your doppler spread can increase and that is indicative of the level of distortion if you have higher doppler spread then, then there can be higher distortion okay we need to but if it is within acceptable level then the distortion is not too much other method 
the many different techniques okay can actually counteract well take care of the distortion okay you can get uh, i mean the uh, reception with intolerance lab quality within the i mean uh, a quality which is within your tolerance limit now the same uh, in the previous case, we started with time and then we considered the frequency, the equivalent frequency uh, condition. We considered the frequency. Domain. Now we started with frequency and uh, we'll consider the time, the equivalent condition in time. Well, we know again that it is uh, there can be good and bad condition if the doppler speed is high okay then it is bad okay well again it depends on uh, it's also a relative measure like if your total frequency bandwidth is wide and compared to that doppler speed is small then the distortion will not be significant it can be negligible Okay, so it is not only Doppler speed. Say if your Doppler speed is two megahertz and your bandwidth is five megahertz, then definitely, I mean, the Doppler speed is significant compared to your bandwidth. However, if your bandwidth is 100 megahertz and Doppler speed is two megahertz, then it is insignificant. The problem will be insignificant. Compared to your signal bandwidth, it is very small. It is 100 megahertz. Compared to that, it is only two citizens. So it depends on the relative values. The signal bandwidth will, will denote as BS, okay? And the Doppler speed as BD. So when your BS is much larger than BD, we consider it to be a good condition. If it is smaller than BB, BD, okay? Then we can consider it to be bad condition. Equivalently, we can consider in time domain. Well, you will have good condition when the multipath environment is changing fast, definitely, right? Because of it may be because of your movement or because of the changes in the environment, whatever the reason is. If you, I mean, it's all because the multipath environment is changing. You get the problem because of the uh, variation in the multipath environment. So if it changes fast, okay, when you are moving fast, the multipath environment is fast, you have actually greater problem. So when you have, I mean, problematic situation in frequency, your multipath in environment is changing fast. So why don't you consider how fast the multipath environment is changing? Well, so you can have an estimate, estimation on how fast it is changing using coherence time. Now we, we call it coherence time. So that's an estimation again, of course, the, I mean, it is changing the environment, but you can consider that, well, the multipath environment has not changed significantly over a particular period. And that period you call coherence time. Okay, so coherence time is just an estimate of the range of time over which the multipath environment okay the multipath in actually impulse response impulse and the frequency response is is what we are calling frequency response is actually the impulse response so this impulse response this frequency response has not changed significantly okay so then if uh, i mean this is an estimate but again this you can consider uh, you can compare with your symbol period with a symbol period, you are sending symbols one after another. When you are sending one symbol over this whole period of transmission of one symbol, if the multipath environment doesn't change, then you are fine. This symbol will not be affected by a change of the environment around. So in time domain, it looks safe. However, within the transmission of your of one symbol, if the environment changes, okay, 
changes several times. Okay, maybe you have 10 TC within one symbol period, then it's a problem. The symbol will undergo a lot of changes at the receiving end. The whole symbol period doesn't find the multiple channel to remain the same. So at the, when it reaches the receiver, different parts will be received differently. Okay, different parts of the symbol in the time in time will be received differently. So you get a distorted signal in time. So you can actually consider uh, a comparison between your symbol period and coherence time. And that you can do this way. If your TS symbol period is smaller than TC, then you can consider it to be uh, favorable. Okay. That over or your whole symbol period, the multiple channel remains the same. Your TC is larger than TS. However, if TS is larger than TC, then it's a problem. You'll get distortion. So either in you can work in frequency domain or in time domain. Okay. Now, since it is the it is how fast that environment is changing uh, that decides whether or not you have the problem. Uh, you can actually term use the term slow and fast. When you have a slow changing environment, then it is favorable. So we call it slow fading. It is slow fading when your TC has a large value. It is changing slowly. TS is smaller than that. So it is favorable. So slow fading is the favorable condition is called slow fading. The multiple environment is called, called. But the slow fading condition you can also find from a compression in the frequency domain. Okay. On the other hand, if it is changing fast, then it is called fast changing. And then you have some, okay, you call it, uh, I mean, TS is larger than TC is short. Okay? So it is called fast fading. Okay? But you can again find it out from the frequency. So depending on the information available in the exam, you should uh, decide whether or not, uh, I mean, whether you should work in frequency domain or in time domain. Now, in our exam, let's work this way. Ignore this, uh, I mean, it should be much higher, it should be much smaller. I mean, generally people to be safely, to declare it safely on the slow fading, they check whether it is much larger than BD or it is much smaller than TC. But for our exam, just check. If BS, BS is larger than BD, you may have to cal calculate BS and BD. If BS is larger, declare it slow. If TS is smaller, okay. Anyway, it doesn't have to be very small compared to TC. If this is just sir, small, sir, uh, small or large, holy hobby. Right. If TS is nine and TC is ten, okay, just declare it as slow. Okay, sir. Okay, so work this way. If BS is hundred and two and BD is hundred, declare it slow. Similarly, if it is marginally smaller, marginally higher here, declare it fast. Okay. In the uh, exam. Okay, now like before, we should be able to relate this time frequency equivalency. TC, we know, I mean, we we'll, we view from the time domain and when frequency domain, we try to estimate, we use FM, okay? The problem is estimated using FM or BD. So there must be a relationship between FM and TC. So again, it depends on how, uh, tight or loose you are when you find out this, when you estimate the coherence time, okay? It is changing, but if it is, if, it, it, if the environment has changed a lot, then you consider it to be a change. Then you relax, you, you lose in, uh, I mean, you have a loose estimation. So then your tissue will be large. So again, it's a, it's a correlation with your initial environment so if you are tight so there are there are different relationships also there are different formula relating tc and fm so one of them is uh, tc equal to 4.23 by fm and it is one of the common relations so please 
use this one in the exam. TC should be equal, I mean, use, unless otherwise specified, use this relationship. Set TC equal to 4.23 by FL. Okay. So far, we have only discussed the problem. Now about solution, there, there is no direct solution really, okay? But the many different techniques, okay? Like frequency domain equalization can you still help, okay? Different techniques like coding, interleaving, different multiple antenna texts, there are different techniques that, um, that are covered in other courses, okay? Few things I also address in the uh, cellular communication course are okay, mostly covered in, in basic communication courses will help overcome the distortion, okay, overcome the bit errors because of uh, the Doppler shift, okay. However, these techniques have, have been getting stronger and stronger. And in 4G, they are strong enough to support user speed up to 120 kilometer uh, per hour with high data rate. Okay, and with moderate or low data rate, the user speed can be up to 350 kilometer per hour and even 500 kilometer per hour. Okay, the service at least can sustain up to this level of speed in 4G because of the strength in all different techniques to correct the errors. Okay, so that completes the whole uh, discussion fading the initial figure I did not explain here, but now probably you understand that when you have, if you are measuring the signal at different points from the source, okay, as you go further, there should be an overall decline in the signal level, definitely. So that is this straight line represents an overall decline. However, there will be some fluctuations always. As you take, I mean, two different, if you measure the signal at two different points closely apart in the space, you'll find some fluctuation. There can be ups and downs because of this multipath environment. There can be additive results somehow, and somehow it can be destructive. So because of many arrival of many different components, there will always be some ups and downs. Okay, so it is a fluctuation around this line. Also, the in the middle part, it shows a sharp fall. Okay, give me a second. Okay, sorry about the break. Well, uh, so there is a, um, I mean, decline also in the middle part. This one shows uh, some, what is called shadowing. Okay, shadowing means, say maybe you are moving by a car and there is, a, I mean, you can see the base station. Okay, there's an endless link. Or, suddenly a building falls uh, between Sarah, sorry to interrupt. Uh, you say to remind us that you will discuss something about media. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah, I'm almost done. Just in a couple of minutes, I'll be able to finish. So if okay. there is if if there is a building, okay, between you and uh, I mean, as you are driving, uh, you cross a building. So when you are uh, on the other side, as long as you are on the other side of building or the building is obstructing you, there'll be definitely lower signal reception. So sometimes this is called shadowing. So like the shadow can obstruct uh, the light, okay? This radio signal can also be obstructed is, uh, because of some, um, some objects. And this is called shadowing effect. Sometimes you can get some shadowing. So maybe this guy, when the guy was measuring, Within this, this 
I mean, at this point, there are some shadowing effect. Okay. So, but there, there is an overall decline of the signal and there's some fluctuation. Now this overall decline is called large scale fading. And the fluctuations are called small scale fading. And in this part of our discussion, we have actually addressed small scale fading. Okay, I mean, from this slide on, everything we have discussed um, fall in the class of small scale fading. And when communication guys gen use the term fading, only, only the fading, they don't say whether it is large or small scale. Okay, they mean small scale fading. Okay, so the sole term fading indicates small scale fading. So that completes my discussion on fading and it will be included in the midterm exam. Questions, any, do you have any questions on this fading part? I'm sorry for uh, taking no problem, sir. a few minutes. Fine, sir. Okay, fine, now, sir. now let me say a little bit about our midterm exam. Do you already have the date for this exam? I don't have it yet. Yes, you, sir, we just submitted the routine already. Okay. Do you remember what the date, what the date is? I don't probably. Okay. Anyway, uh, we'll take the exam using Google Classroom. There will be a good number of short questions and problems. Okay. Uh, there can be even, I'm yet to set the question. So I don't know, but there can be even objective type questions. Okay, multiple choice or whatever. So whatever the question types are, please answer everything on paper and uh, scan it and upload. Okay, so, so last time we had some problem. Uh, you face some problem uploading on the same quiz environment. So I'll create on the Google Classroom, I'll create a separate assignment for your submission. That will have the same timing. So please, uh, I mean, you'll get your questions in, I mean, in uh, one, uh, one of my assignment. There'll be a separate assignment for the submission of your answer, okay? There'll be just one session for all the questions. You answer all the, I mean, all the questions. When, when you complete at the end, you scan and upload on the assignment part, okay? Please don't use other methods for submission. However, if someone gets in trouble, I mean, he, he fails to submit in the assignment. So, I mean, in this, this kind of extreme situation, you can send me via email, okay? I'm writing down my email here, address here. Or actually, I'll share a guideline. Uh, there also, I'll in include my email address. Sorry, when I hurry, I mistake. 19th June is your exam date, 19th June. Okay, okay. You still have 10 days. So you have a lot of time to take preparation for wireless. I, I'm sure that uh, uh, you don't, um, I mean, uh, in all these days, you'll be preparing for my course, I mean, uh, other courses are not as important as this one, right? <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, I was just kidding. Uh, yeah. The push, uh, well, I, I'll come on to that point. Um, and there'll be uh, video surveillance. You'll have, all of you have to, uh, I mean, you'll, you'll have to join the session five minutes, at least five minutes before we start the exam and turn on your video. So all of you have to be visible first, okay, before the exam starts. I need to make sure that all of you are visible. And you know, there'll be multiple invigilators taking your condition. Uh, don't, please don't try to cheat, okay? Try to answer uh, whatever you can. I, I, I know, I mean, people who ha have planned to cheat will not pay heed to to my request. Anyway, uh, uh, 
the exam will always be open book okay as long as we uh, take it online and it is not only open book you can access the video the recorded lectures okay so the open book open notes and recorded lectures and even online sources you can access but this one can confuse i i allow uh, your access to online sources too but what happens let me tell you from my experience uh, people search okay using my question and different things appear in the on uh, appear online so they are they get misled okay they actually they write something different different from what the answer should be i mean they actually misunderstand from online responses okay. so it it uh, i mean uh, that's what uh, i found last year with the students okay uh, but i allow you to access anything but i don't allow you to communicate anybody except me okay that you cannot do no way okay. chat or whatever screen sharing no way you can communicate with any person okay you can communicate with sources different uh, uh, uh i mean if the source is, is not a, if the source is not as long as the source is not a human being it's okay now one last thing i want to highlight i mean every um, condition comes with some advantages and also some downsides uh to maintain proper outcome okay so now we have a new environment we cannot take the exam with physical presence we have a different so there there are some advantages for yours for you like you have everything available it will be open book okay the reason i make it open book that it will be difficult for me if i make it a closed book exam many people actually will take help from the books or notes okay so it is very difficult to so to prevent from them from doing that so let us just make it open let us make it uh, equal for everybody however so that's an advantage in this new environment you you are getting okay but there will also be some um, some downsides well also i mean it is very difficult to maintain fairness here okay if there are some unfair means the good students are adversely affected i scale the grades i scale the grades okay so if all of you i mean i mean if there is cheating and all of you submit uh, i mean good performance okay then the i mean because of scaling the actual good students will be the losers okay so i have to try my best to stop cheating and so for this purpose uh you have to accept something that i i want to tell you now okay uh, the questions different questions will appear for different students okay the numbers the question numbers will be random the question numbers you will find some random number. it may be 738 it may be 839 it may be 214 for every question there will be the, there will be some question number but the question number will be some random numbers when you write down you use that random number if it is 240 in the question okay you write down it 240 that's that's how you answer okay but different people will find different co questions on their screens and also uh you will find only one question at a time okay once you answer that okay you will be i mean if you uh, you are answering on paper so uh you uh, i mean you just once you hit next you can get to the next answer and you cannot come back to the old answer okay so the old answer will not be visible any, any longer so one after another 
the questions will appear but one at a time after you get to the last question okay you hit submit and that's how you complete answering okay now i understand that there will be i mean it it also does not offer equal judgment because it is not possible for me to make all the questions equally time consuming there will be progress bar showing how many questions you have answered and how many are left but since i mean since all the questions are not equally time consuming it does not reflect exactly how much time you require okay i mean different people will require actually different amount of time although the same number of questions are left however i mean i will try to make the questions i mean to take up i mean many of the questions will be taking up equal time some other questions will be also be taken i mean this will not cause too much differences among the students okay i i will try to make sure that you don't you don't have too i mean the equity is maintained as much as possible i'll try but i have to use uh, this method i cannot give all the questions together for all of you um uh, as an attempt to stop cheating okay it's very important for me to to actually make all the possible to make an all out effort to stop cheating so uh i mean the progress bar will tell you how many questions you have in the beginning and then how many you have you you have gone through how many you have left okay so you have a, at least a crude estimation of uh time you require so some level of time management probably you can do and i'm saying that all the questions will be quick okay uh no questions will be too much time consuming uh, well well there may be some problems okay some problems will take take up some time yeah i understand i understand okay like we have covered some some formula here this course and yeah you may it may take for some problems it may take a little longer okay so as i said that all questions will not be equally time consuming but you need to understand the the condition okay because of corona we have come to this kind of, uh, i i we would uh, have a better exam we could have a better exam we if we if this corona we did if we did not have this corona okay with physical presence we didn't have it. so please try to understand the the limitations that we have um and uh, try to just uh, be accommodative okay so uh uh and uh, the the formula uh, uh, i mean i i have mentioned that few things uh, are assumptions like for c equals to f lambda i mean you consider that the velocity is the velocity of c okay so i i mean throughout my discussions i mentioned what assumptions you should make okay so some information you may find missing but because of the assumption okay probably you can actually complete solving the problem okay but if you still have problem i mean you can of course ask me i mean as a human being i i mean my i i can be wrong in setting the question okay there can be some information missing so feel free to ask me anything you cannot communicate with someone else but you can ask me uh, directly okay you can give me a call uh this is the best thing okay so to make sure that i don't miss because you can also send me sms in whatsapp or chat box you can use all these methods to communicate with me but to make sure that i don't miss your message uh, is the best you call you give me a direct call okay i'll keep my phone available with me with myself okay and if i even don't pick up at the worst case okay just here you speak up you speak up now at the time of the exam please keep your microphone on unmuted but keeping the sound level low so it doesn't cause an i mean noise for others okay so keep the sound level low but keep it un unmuted 
that's all from my end okay now what do you think it's already 10 50. yes sir, sir one last clarification sir right. a very small answer mm -hmm. sir so, so sir uh, it's like the questions will be given like each questions will be given after a period of time right sir no it's like not period it is up to you as you click next you can get yes, to the next question so in, okay, in a second sir. in a second actually you can move to the next question okay but sir, the answers we will submit all together at once at the at end once. of the at the end of the exam yeah after all the answers are accumulated uh like we'll have one pdf that we send sir yeah we'll yeah. be giving extra time for that so that upload process i mean the, there will be total time for the whole exam which includes which considers your time for scanning and uploading okay sir so okay, they'll provide sir. and you can submit answer anytime even in 10 minutes you can complete answering i mean if you think that you don't uh you're not able to answer anything okay you just submit in 10 minutes i don't mind but you cannot yes, sir but you cannot leave from here okay yes, sir yeah. sir, you, sir after question ligbo after submit for like the erokum erokum to na i'm not sure to submit for yeah you are submitting everything together just the question yes okay. sir after the question could ask very well the questions will be visible one at a time. The questions will just be visible. You are receiving the questions one at a time. Okay. But oh, I, mean, so thank you. I mean, if it is like you note down the question and you answer it later, it's okay. It's okay. That you can do. Yes, sir. I understand, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. But time okay. management is important. I mean, there will not be too much time because I will set also time constraint. And that's yes, also sir. just to stop cheating. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because yes, if sir. there is too much time, I mean, people will find some way to. I mean, people are, you know, these days is smarter than I am. And <laughs> during my during my boyhood, I was very good at cheating. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I was very good at cheating. But these days, I think people are even smarter because they have a lot of devices. Okay, for this purpose, we had to do in those days, you know, our lives are difficult because I had to do everything manually. Okay, we had to, we had to sir, pull. what was your cheating method? Uh, well, fooling the teacher. <laughs> okay, I was very good at that. Uh, however, um, uh, sir, uh, I think, sir, just, would, just to, I mean, yes. uh, since yes. I, I'm, a, I'm a teacher here, yes, sir. okay, I need to also tell you that. At some point of time, yes. I I stopped it completely. Okay, it was yes. it was my first year in Buet. At I mean probably at the end of first year in Buet or the beginning of my second year of Buet. Okay, around this time, I decided to uh, come stop cheating complete. And since then, I never did that in the exam. I mean, just so, because of, because uh, I have some ethical changes, okay, uh, around this time. Yes. Okay, sir. Yeah. Now go ahead, please. Uh, sir, it would be really helpful, sir, if you allocated a particular time for scanning, sir. So, so it's like a psychological. No, I don't. I, I I I don't want to do that. Most teachers okay. do so, but I yes, I just want to leave this part open for you. If you if you can answer quickly, you have more time yes, for submission. Okay, I mean, just there will be just one whole period for doing everything. When, if, if, uh, I mean, the teachers would who go like that, I mean, that's also a good way. I don't want to criticize. But yes, in that case, the invigilators have to monitor whether or not the students have stopped writing. And then they cannot write, they can only scan and upload. Okay, if you separate. Yes, separate the time periods for this uploading process and writing part okay then the teachers and vigilators also have to monitor closely and this part is sometimes not um, sometimes difficult okay some students keep writing and uh, keep, i mean so keep i mean placing the paper somewhere okay i mean well it is probably manageable but uh, i think it's not a problem if I keep the whole part together, keep the whole process together, you write 
and answer all together you submit the whole uh, process, process you complete by some deadline okay let's take some period okay sir okay sir no problem sir and so lastly sir is there any pointer sir how about how we should study sir or which parts to focus or anything of that sort well and sir uh, the math sir which from which book yeah. should we practice yeah well uh, if i suggest any book now okay and you solve from there i'll give you a problem of different type okay so that <laughs> so that you uh, so that you so that i can make you uh, do some brainstorming okay yes sir we appreciate like that. that but sir uh, i mean so, if you give us some it is more like yes. yeah no 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 i i i mean i i wanted to say something and that uh, yes. that's something uh, that will be helpful i mean that will be uh, the exact answer okay um uh, this is this is the secondary answer the primary answer is please try to collect the questions of the previous years okay try to collect the questions of previous years i know that you cannot collect the questions of la no last year also you can collect the midterm uh, exam paper question you can collect okay so try to collect the previous year's questions and <clears throat> this course started uh, i think two or three years ago before that there is a similar course called the course number was 4613 rf engineering 4613 okay so that covered uh, also similar topics these topics are also covered then there so either 45441 of the recent years or the 4613 questions of uh, early uh, i mean uh, previous years you collect and these questions will uh, be i think helpful okay please try to uh, solve them this can help you a lot yes sir we understand so thanks a lot so thanks a lot for your time sir okay anything else no sir pray for us sir lots and lots of prayers sir okay jazakallah so inshallah, i'll see you again sir. after the midterm again inshallah we'll come back to our class and we have to take a few lab classes consecutively you know that uh, yes sir yes sir a few of them left so inshallah we'll we'll be able to manage everything inshallah sir inshallah and sir. i'm sorry uh, i'll i'll also uh, I, i wanted to publish the grades of the class test okay uh, i'll do it after the meeting inshallah Okay. Inshallah. Okay. Inshallah. Sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, and if you uh, have any questions while you prepare for the course, you can feel free to contact me. Okay. Exactly. You can give me a call anytime, even at late night. You can call me. If I don't answer, then send me a, a message. Okay. So I can call you back. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Just a call. Just a call for your time. Thank you sir. Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.